Thanks for staying with us. So, joining us on the show today is a young man, Ade Diron Rutimi. He's going to share with us his experience um, on what transpired between him and the Economic and Financial Crime Commission. Um, Rutimi, are you there? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm there. Good to have you on Good the show. Morning. So we read your story, and it was interesting because uh, you're just an average yeah, Nigerian. My network is breaking. I can't really hear you very well. OK. Um, can you hear me now? Maybe you need I'm to I'm really managing to hear you. OK. So okay, in a nutshell, we'd like you to share your story of what happened at EFCC. We can hear you clearly. Go ahead, please. Yeah. OK. Yeah. What happened is this. On the, on the 14th of uh, no, I mean, October, that was last month. I was actually in my room, sleeping. And uh, at around, that's the time I could remember, at around 4 a.m. in the morning, I had some set of people jumping into the compound and trying to break doors to the, the uh, apartment. You know, it was like, uh, I live in a, a room and palliative container, and there is self-contained there. So they are trying to break in, force their way into those rooms. I was like, what is going on? I thought they were hammered in the first place, so I don't know what to do. I was just calm. I was, I was restless. Actually, in my room, I don't know what to do. I'm about, I've not been to that place before. I've never heard of people robbing that area before. So what is happening? So all of a sudden, I started hearing, gun up, kill up, shoot up, and I was more confused. What is really going on? But they actually they raided my room last. They broke into the. They said, "Okay, where's your laptop? Where's your phone?" But I got a bit confused when I saw their jacket. These people are EFCC, so I shouldn't have problem to be scared or panic for whatsoever. These people should be. It should be people that I should trust. So I was about to talk to them when one of them pointed gun at me. I said, "Bring out your phone. Bring out your laptop." I said, "Calm down." I want to talk to you because I'm seeing a jacket, yes, a jacket on you. It shouldn't be a problem. I voluntarily, I willingly gave out my laptop and my phones. I was even thinking they are going to check, probably they see anything on there, on, on me, on, on it. They will arrest me and then they say I should go with them. Or if they didn't see anything, they will let me be and they will leave. Right. Or so they did not check anything. They did not search my phone, they did not search my laptop. He said, I should stand up and follow them. Mm. I was surprised. Oh, well, I thought maybe so they are working this time, on because, me, because of time, wrote to me, because of time, wrote to me, I'd like you to... Be misleading. Ta so wrote to no me. problem. I will follow you to your office. But while we are going, I told, I was even joking with one of them. I said, if I go to your office and you guys discover there is nothing on me, you are going to give me transport fare back <laughs> to other people because I don't have any money on me. He said, I should not worry that when I get there, if they didn't find anything, they'll give right. me transport check back that same day. Then I was like, okay, there's no problem if that is the case. All right, wrote to so me. we were going. I got there that morning. We are like nine or ten. So I got there that morning, and to my surprise, they did not even search us. They did not search the phone. They did not search the laptop. They just said all of us should lie down, and they took a picture of us. And I know instantly that they are going to upload that picture online. Oh, that's where the problem began. I began to wonder. And I was thinking, yes, you have to do a proper investigation and about All right. searching so, our phone, searching our laptop, make sure that we are actually into cybercrime before posting that picture online. Mm -hmm. But when I saw that, I was like, wow, my image will be damaged. No, they will actually mm -hmm. destroy my image if, mm -hmm. that, if that picture goes online. Right. But to my surprise, I started getting calls from people. I guess probably they put it online, and I know the, I knew this. That is exactly what they did. All right. So I was even thinking, okay, when I got to the office, they searched my thing. I did not see anything on it. They still released it. Go to me. I need to cut you off at this point. What did the EFCC official tell you after your laptop was taken and the phone? Were you? Did they tell you they found incriminating evidence in your property? And what happened yes. afterwards? They searched my phone for like four hours. Okay. So they did not find anything on it. Okay. Did they let you go? So they did not, they gave me bail condition that day. 
and the bail condition I could not meet up with that bail condition. Okay. And I was surprised. Why are they giving bail conditions even when I did not do anything? Even right. when nothing incriminating was found on my phone. So, so I was supposed to provide one lawyer, two shorties, with a large house property in Ibadan and must be a taxpayer for at least two years. Ah. Where will I get that from? Okay, let me get a few more questions in for you before we um, bring in our so EFC. As of today, do you know what you were charged for? Charged with? As of today? I was charged for suspect uh, criminal. They, they, I think they target for, uh, so I'm a suspect, a cyber crime. For cyber crime. Have you been to court? Have they taken you to court? What, um, legally, what measures, what, um, what yeah, measures have they taken? For, for them, for you to be able to defend yourself and for them to take this up, you know, legally, instead of just giving you a charge? I actually met up with the big condition two days later and I was released on bail. And I don't think they, they are planning on, on taking me to court either. But have they... And, okay. Okay. All right. Have they said anything to you afterwards? Have they written to no, you they anything? they didn't say anything to me afterwards. They just said that you keep coming back to come and sign. So I, I, I was going there every Monday to go back to go and sign. So I went there on Monday to sign, and I actually asked for my property, and they did not even mention anything about it. So I thought maybe I will be going for a very long time. And each and every time I go into that office, the experience I had with All them right. is always traumatizing. And All right. I don't like I'm going to have to let you go soon because I would like to bring in the FC officer, but... Were you um, brutalized in any way? Did they harm you in those two days you were in their custody? No, no. They no. did not harm me. They did oh. not do anything. Okay, they didn't very good. Me. Oh. Thank you very much, um, uh, Rotimi, for sharing your story. We're going to try to bring in our guest. And the reason why we're having this conversation is to understand the modus operandi of the EFCC. Yes. How do they even, when they get suspects, what are the next steps? Do they call the police to follow them? Did they go? Did they make arrests themselves? Um, how are these things done? Because we are trying to read our country of brutality, yes. but not just the police, Every but form. law enfor enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. The fact that Nigerians are not seen, they, they seem not to be seen as citizens, but just people they can actually um, rule over. Um, so it's important for us to bring this story so Nigerians understand, so our leaders understand what Nigerians, I average say, Nigerians say. go through. Mm. You own a laptop, you have a phone, and suddenly you're a suspect. You're suspect. And even if you're suspected, they don't find incriminating evidence against you, you don't even get an apology, Anything say or a, a compensation for that, and that's why it's important for us to speak to somebody who can um, give shed some light on how how this happened. Let's go on a break while we're trying to get our guest in. Uh, we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We have a spokesperson of the EFCC, uh, Mr. Wilson Uwajarin. Welcome, sir. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Good morning. Yes, good morning. So before you came on, we had a guest, uh, Ruti Me, uh, who was talking about the fact that EFCC came to his house at night, very early in the early hours of the morning, uh, arrested him, um, took his laptop, phone, and kept him in custody until he was able to provide a shorty, uh, and then released two days afterwards. And because Nigerians, this is like a season where we're discussing about um, hashtag NSARS and um, um, uh, yeah, um, the indiscriminate uh, behavior of law enforcement agencies um, on citizens. Uh, it would be great. Of, we would like you to explain to us how the entire operation of the FCC runs, especially if there's a suspect, and what are the various steps that are taken before the person is eventually arraigned. Well, thank you for, for that question. Uh, I think it's, um, it's an opportunity for me to also enlighten the public on, on, on the uh, methods of the ESCC. Uh, contrary to the narrative by the young man, there was no application of force in his arrest. Okay. Our operative uh, went to Abiyokuta based on intelligence to arrest <coughs> suspected internet force stars. And nine suspects were arrested. He happened to be one of the nine. What happened when he was arrested, the person went to his house, knocked on the door, and it was his wife who opened the door for our operatives. He did not resist arrest. So there was no reason whatsoever for force to be applied in apprehending him. Meanwhile, it is important to state that internet fraud 
because generally cyber crimes are white collar crimes. They are not violent crimes. So there's no reason for any law enforcement agency to apply force if you want to arrest internet fraud suspect. You can only apply minimum force if they resist arrest. In this instance, there was no resistance. So there was no absolutely no need for anybody to apply force to arrest him. That is one. Um, the second issue is this. He was arrested alongside each other suspect and taken to our office in the valley. Usually when we arrest suspect like that, it is possible during arrest that you may pick the wrong person. What we usually do after arrest is to profile the suspect. Once we have profiled them and established those that are actually involved in the crime, we then issue out information that we have made arrest. Those that are not involved in such crime, after profiling, they are allowed to go. In the case of this young man, he was with us for two days. During those two days, the devices found on him were analyzed. We have forensic capability in the SEC. We subjected those devices to forensic analysis. And after two days, mindful of his rights under the Constitution, he was offered administrative bail and allowed to go home while the investigation continues. That is the reason he was asked to be reporting every Monday because the case was not closed. He was not given a clean bill of health. He was simply asked to go on bail because we cannot continue to keep him stored in custody while we are doing the investigation. Because he has the right under the Constitution to right. pay, which okay. he was offered. Right. The okay. case is still under investigation, which is why this narrative that he's putting out is premature. Right. Analysis okay. of telephone and um, yes, and uh, other electronic devices found on uh, suspect is just one aspect of the investigation. There are other aspects of cyber crime investigation that, that the commission undertakes. This is not the forum for me to disclose such right, information. Right, right, right. Okay. Internet okay. first act. Let me get a few more questions in for you, sir. Can yeah. use those, that kind of information. Right. So we are doing other part of the investigation that the young man is not aware of. Mm. He right. was not told that nothing has been found on him. Right. That he has, he has been exonerated of the crime. So mm. the investigation is still on. Okay. It's mature now for him. All right. He, Let me get a few more questions in for you, sir. No case was established against him, so yeah. he wrongfully arrested him. That's All right. Country. All right, go ahead. Okay, Mr. Um, Wilson, I do not, I'm not a lawyer, so maybe you should help enlighten me. Was he given an opportunity to get his lawyer? And if he had a lawyer, would he still be expected to visit you every day if you do not have any incriminating evidence to hold him? And would his um, laptop and phones be given back to him if he had a lawyer to represent him at your office? Well, any suspect of crime, whether... Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Any, any suspect of crime, whether it's a crime or crime corruption case, you you are entitled to have your lawyer even present while you are being interrogated. If you know that you need to get your lawyer, you you, you can have your lawyer present and you witness everything. We even encourage suspect to ask the lawyer to come so that tomorrow you will not come out to say that. Somebody extracted information from you under duress. We have big devices in our offices. Every of our interrogation room is fitted with video recording devices. So that mm. when your cases go to court, right. you cannot come and see somebody force or induce you to make statements that ordinarily, willingly, you will not make. So mm. those things are there. You have the right to a lawyer as okay. a suspect. All right. If so, you want to. You so this get. particular person had his lawyer present. I, I, I can't say that because I don't have that information. I'm okay. based in Africa. I wasn't there when he was interrogated. But I'm sure the opposition will tell him that you, you need to get your lawyer if you have the resources to get a lawyer. Okay. I'm, right. I'm aware that he has put out some information that he paid the lawyer as him to, to get him on bail or so. If he can afford 200000 to pay a lawyer, he can also get that to get a to pay him by, all right, let's okay. get one here. Go ahead. Yeah, so, sir, I am uh, curious as to why he was being arrested before being profiled. So my, my thinking now is the profiling should come first, then you have an evidence, and you pick up for arrest. If you do not have, if the profiling hasn't been done, you can invite the person 
to the office for questioning and the person is not supposed to bail himself out so i'm confused as to your procedure and i would like you to enlighten us how it works exactly are you there yeah I, i'm with you yes i i, I thank you for that uh, question uh, you know that uh, for the people uh, it would be too hard for you to invite a cyber crime suspect to come to your office. He will never come to your office. Mm -hmm. You need to make arrests. It's only when you are dealing with high profile individual, politically exposed persons, that you can extend the invitation to them and you honor it. Who is that Yahoo Yahoo boy that you will send the invitation to and he will come to your office? Mm -hmm. He will never show up. Mm -hmm. So, and these things are based on intelligence. You do surveillance five days before you even carry out your raid. You take them by surprise. That's the only way you can make arrests. You can even make any headway in the investigation. You don't invite the cyber crime suspect in your office. You are right. Right. Okay. I would like to debate this further with you, but I'll let you go because um, it would be great for him to take advantage of the judicial independent panel going on right now mm -hmm. to bring this case to them. So, Rotimi, if you are hearing us, we'd advise you to take this matter to the judicial inquiry. Hopefully, they can invite the EFCC and then do a thorough investigation because. There's, there are a lot of things you can ask questions. Thank yes. you very much, Mr. Wilson, for joining us this morning. Yeah. There are so many angles. Because yeah. the truth is that we want, wh wh where we're taking Nigeria to is I want everybody to be treated the same way you treat a high-profile person. Mm. We want you to treat a everybody. We are all citizens. Yes, we are. Yes, he's a suspect. He should be dignified as a person, as a human being, be to be invited first. Yeah. Yes, we understand it's, it's difficult for Yahoo Yahoo Boy to honor it, but I think that should be extended. That one. Number two, the point of having a lawyer is extremely important. Yes, I don't is. think Rotimi mentioned that he was asked or was reminded of his mm -hmm. law. You know, in America, when they, when they arrest you, they remind you of your Miranda rights. You can't say here, you don't want to say anything yes. to your lawyer's so presence. I think what we as Nigerians, and your view, our responsibility is to begin to to also educate our viewers. Mm -hmm. When you're arrested, you are entitled to, to a lawyer. lawyer. Yeah. You don't have to say a word. If you just keep saying, I would like to call my lawyer, that's your, your right. Mm -hmm. You call your lawyer and yeah. he comes. Even if you don't have a lawyer, mm -hmm. call your uncle that I need a lawyer. Quickly <laughs> come Please and get me, me a lawyer. Because anything you say, mm -hmm. that, that there could be used. But I don't know, this is Nigeria. Yeah, but you know that before we get to that point where you look at a policeman with a gun and say, I want my lawyer present. Hey. <laughs> you need to hold yeah. your side up. <laughs> you can collect some slaps for that. But I think that's where we are working yeah. towards. Yeah. Everybody yeah. should yeah. be treated well as right. citizens yes. of our oh, human rights and, you're, and you're, 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 you're innocent until proven guilty, guilty. Yeah. so even if you're a yahoo yahoo boy just like you rightly said profile the person have all the hard evidence so even if you're going to bring the person when the person invites a lawyer there's enough evidence already to show that this person is um is is culpable uh, listen, we'll continue to do this kind of stories just to help educate Nigerians more mm -hmm. about this uh, modus operandi of our various law enforcement agencies and see what your own rights are, what mm -hmm. you're supposed to do. I know how to citizen. protect yourself as a citizen. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>